Hello everybody, today is January 2nd, 2014. It is Season 2, Episode 5 of Beacon 147. Let's get this going. Hello everybody, this is Thomas. Hey, this is Bobby, how you doing? Well, I myself am pretty excited. The holiday season is finally coming to an end. Mm-hmm. Winter Festivus is over. New Year's, at least Gregorian New Year's is done. The the winter carnival. Winter carnival season, <laughs> as I like to call it, um, is, is, is coming to an end. When, if, you're, if it's winter carnival, though, it really ends after ML King Day, because, you know, it is kind of a January holiday. So winter mm-hmm. carnival starts the day before Thanksgiving and ends the day after um, Martin Luther Ye- King Day. If you you have all of, the, all, of the, all of the carnivals in there. You have officially confused me. All right. Yeah. All holidays from Thanksgiving to ML King Day just rolled into one period of missing work and all that fun stuff. Well, um, we did take our, our, our winter our winter hiatus. Uh, spent some time with family and friends. And... <laughs> yeah. The, the, the Christmas slash everybody had the flu break. <laughs> God, no joke, man. It has been nuts. Just yeah, it was well, it was pretty crappy. But it's done, and yes. and and the sun is shining. The sh- the sun is on a new rising trajectory. The warm temperatures are about four months away, but they're coming. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, as far as the Star Citizen goes, they did uh, do a short live stream, just a few hours. Yeah, and I kind of feel like this was a PR move to. Uh, compensate for some potentially bad news uh yeah. the dog fighting module which we were all eagerly anticipating and i think they had pretty much announced for sure i mean up until probably a couple just a few days before the live stream that I'm the dog fighting positive. module yeah i'm almost positive they said december i went back of course there's like as usual twenty thousand billion, you mm-hmm. know posts and videos and articles and this and that to, to, to dig through i couldn't find confirmation but i could have swore someone said december but yeah, yeah. And, and 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 i'm almost positive they did too and i i could have just made that up thinking that it was december but i i, I was gonna say that i would venture to say just days before the announcement that it was going to be delayed that they were still saying it was going to be released i kind of feel what happened <laughs> was uh you know chris uh, sandy and the rest of the team were in santa monica and they were on the on a skype call with their team and you know and and and, you know throughout the world just you know talking to everybody trying to figure out what they were going to do and i think a decision was made just a few nights before that uh before they you know were getting prepped for the the holiday break not to put the uh dog fighting module out and to delay it and then i think in a very wise kind of pr move they let everyone know i mean those of us i'm sure all got the email (laughs) letting us know that it was going to be delayed and Oh my you know, god, that the, the the live stream. Oh my god, yeah. They they said, oh yeah, the heck, you know, we're gonna delay the the thing, and then on the live stream, we got to see why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh so it goodness. just it's it surprised me how well everyone took it. Yeah. You know, when I had kind of got, I'd gotten the email that it was gonna be delayed, and um, you know, and and you know, saw on the website where Chris Roberts made the made the announcement the announcement that it was going to be be delayed. I was fine with it. I mean, of course, you're going to be a little disappointed. I mean, why it lasts you be? it lasts like ten minutes. Everybody everybody yeah. was pissed off for like five ten minutes, and then after that, they were like, oh, you know, on, on second thought, it's probably a good thing that they're not going to release the one that we saw where <laughs> the server crashed and they were teleporting and lagging all over the place. Right. And, yeah, but uh, I was I was anticipating that the in general, because you know how internet communities are. I mean, they're very rarely <laughs> civil, even on the best yep. days. Um, yep. You know, and you, I think we were on the phone talking about it, and I was like, oh, I haven't even I've been so busy and you know taking care of other things. I, I haven't gotten a chance to go on the forums. I bet you it's just flame war after flame war after flame yep. war, and uh, you were checking the forums. I was like, no. Like I looked at yeah. Reddit and like for Star Citizen, the top page of, for Reddit, it was like. Nothing. Yeah. Nope, nothing nobody was pissed. It was like, oh, hey, did you yeah. guys check out this other ship and all these cool screenshots? I mean, it was like nothing. Nobody cared. Yeah. Now, awesome. we did get 
uh, we did get a couple patches to the hangar module. They have persistence yeah. now in the hangar module. So you can go in and, you know, if you purchase some things on Voyager Direct, put some weapons on your ships and they'll stay if you log out and log back in. Yeah. So well, persistence is good. Uh, we got a new, we got the updated model of the uh, Hoozy Doozy in it. What's, what's the name of that one? The, the patrol ship. Oh, the, the Cutlass. Ends. Yeah, we got the Cutlass, and then we got the oh, other and the, one. And the, uh, oh, my gosh, the Avenger. I know. The event, thank you. Gosh, yeah. I, I drew a blank <laughs> on that. I'm like, what was that ship called? You know, the one, <laughs> the the one with the ladder, one? you know? The... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we didn't get the PBR version of it in, but we did no. get the, 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 the actual entry way into it versus having to do the ladder. Um, they put up some Christmas wreaths throughout the hangar, which, you know, is pretty cool. Um, they added a few more uh, items that you could purchase through Voyager Direct. You can get some my, new fishies for the fish my tank. My favorite thing, I'm telling you, man, my favorite thing was that shooting gallery. I put, I didn't, I put I've been all intentionally, three weapons that I had on the shooting gallery. I've been intentionally <laughs> avoiding that. Yeah. Um, I, it, I don't it is know why. Simple. It's cool, but it's simple, man. I mean, you just sit in this little chair, and there's like little targets that pop up, and you shoot them, and they fall down and pop back up. I mean, it's not... It's not huge, but you can see the, for like a split second, you can see the color of the laser coming out of the gun, you know? Yeah. And it is limited on weapons. It's, it's not every weapon that's currently in game. It's, it's, I think it's just the ones that have sound effects and I think it's like most of the the class one or two weapons. Yeah. Yeah. So I, like I said, I personally haven't dived too much into it. Now my reason for it is because the hangar module has been delayed. I don't want to get that oh, taste, yeah. you know. They once you get that taste, your mouth's like, "Ooh, I want to keep fighting. I want to, you know, I want to shoot at other targets." So uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want yeah. to make that wait that much more painful. So I've been I, avoiding I probably, it like the plague. I probably log into my hangar module thingy. Um, I don't know once every couple of weeks, maybe just to walk around, take a look at stuff again, just to kind of remind myself of what I had and what I wish I had. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's that's about it. You know, uh, when this thing came out, I logged in, took a look at it and, you know, saw the shooting gallery. Took me about 30 minutes to figure it out. Some people said it wasn't working, but I think it's it, because it they were just trying to, to use that. the wrong weapons. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, well, the other thing, too. And all right. Full disclosure, I did step in it for like three seconds just because I wanted to see how the interface worked. But I didn't really shoot anything. But you have to equip the weapons on it through the yeah. through the modding table, as if it were you, a ship. Yeah, as, yeah, you, exactly. You treat it exactly like a ship. So I think the people who were having difficulties with it were the, are the same people who are having difficulties using the modding table for their ships. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it was, and it doesn't say in the key bindings what yeah. to press. You know, it it's, took me like an hour to figure the damn thing out. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean. I, I, I'd, 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 it's second nature. I don't know if it's the tab or the caps lock, but you know you have to press kind of one of those keys so you get your cursor so you can start dragging things around, and you know since that's not in key bindings anywhere, so it's not extremely obvious. And then you know there are some people that are playing with you know a gamepad or you know different things like that, and there is no functionality for using those tables with gamepads right now. At least I haven't found the key bind. There might be one, but you know I haven't found it yet. So, <clears throat> but. So the I, I did get to see stuff? my badger, my badger gun that I bought. I did. Oh, yeah. I was able to get it equipped, and I was able to fire it, and it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, they still have. I was. I was kind of hoping that they would change a, a few things every time they release the hangar module. Uh, a release. I'm hoping for more ship limits. I, I, I know this is like the the biggest first world problem that there is, <laughs> but you know, I, I keep hoping that. One day I'll be able to, you know, after a fresh install of an, a patch, be able to walk in and see all of my ships instead of having to edit the, you know, the, the game file so I can make the hangar bigger so I can see all of my ships. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, small things like that. Um, I am still hoping for a more comprehensive key binding list. You know, I want to be able to remap, you know, I mean, it's a PC game and, you know, that's the bread and butter of PC games is Full being control. able to customize it and give yep. you that control and... You know, right now I'm still kind of stuck with it's got rudimentary key bindings, but you know I don't want to use my tab or my caps lock key to to you know pull up my mouse. Yeah. I want you know use something that's a little bit better. I'd like to be able to use you know my controller, you know, because that's going to be my primary um, my primary casual use will be the controller just for ease. Yep. Uh, I did buy a nice Hotas setup uh, for myself. That was did my you? Christmas oh, gift. Right. Yeah, I bought a uh, Satec. 
a good brand. Say no more. That's a good brand. I mean, yeah, Satek X52 Pro. Um, yep. So I wanted to, and I'm over here like staring at it. So it's you know for those of you watching on video, <laughs> sitting like, over in the corner, just shining, yeah. you know. Um. So so I went ahead and got I went ahead and bought that and. That's I bought that anticipating this the uh, the uh, oh, dog fighting killer. module so so that's why I was like so disappointed when it didn't come out and initially I was like oh I wanted to play and there's like nothing you can use those the uh, you know a decent joystick in, in Hotas for unless you want to fly you know like World War II bomber jets you know it's yeah, like or or bomber those planes, really excuse me not jets flight simulators like Jane's yeah. and you know all that yeah X plane or or yep. Microsoft uh, flight simulator X you know. I don't want to fly Cessnas or spaceships, <laughs> you know? You want to fly your freaking uh, your Idris Corvette, man. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So uh, I was so that, that was my little bit of, of bumminess about it. But when the, what's delayed, what, till February? Is that what they said? Um, I'm seeing stuff as late as April. Okay. When I was reading about it, um, a lot of people were saying March to April. Okay. So, you know, enough time for us to, you know, have the second half of the season of Walking Dead come on AMC and, you know, once that gets yep. to its end point, maybe get a little hanger module. Yeah. Trying to trying now, trying to trying to give myself things to look forward to <laughs> instead of just that hanger module. Yeah. Now my thing is is uh you know, with with the game, the dog fighting part of it being pushed back until March mm-hmm. and April, I think you know, just reading Reddit and, you know, some of the forums and stuff like that. I think the biggest question on everybody's mind right now is with with the dogfighting module being pushed back to March and April, potentially, um, what about the planet side module? Are they still working on that? Is it are they gonna try to release those simultaneously because the planet side was supposed to come out around April, May, you know, that sort of thing. Well, so, I, I definitely don't think we should anticipate the planet side module coming that soon. Really? Um, I, but now they, I do know that they are separate but equal teams working, you know, on these things. The, the, the same crew working on the planet side module is not necessarily the same crew working on right. the hangar module. So in essence, it might not necessarily delay it. But just from a pure, like, development release schedule, marketing type point of view, you don't release two big things really close to each other and then have a lull. So you release that one. That's true. You know, wait a few months, release another, wait a few months, release another. Even if you have it kind of ready to go, clean it up, polish it, you know, and space it out. I, I Delay that. You don't want to blow your load all at once. You know what I mean? Like, well, <laughs> <laughs> so you're thinking that they're, it's it's going to come later instead of instead of soon. I, 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 I would be, <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised just because they're awesome if it's ready for them to give it to us. If it were me, even if it was ready, I'd kind of want to delay it just a little bit, just so yeah. there is that kind of that build up factor. And you know, it was when the dog, when the hangar module came, it comes out, or first came out, it was like crazy. Like everybody was yeah. in. You saw nothing but videos of people, you know, kind of walking through the hangar and oh, look at this, look at that, look at this. Now, really, the only videos you see is when it's something new, or yeah, when true. when someone's like stress testing their PC or benchmarking their PC. You don't see you know weekly hangar module videos and you're right. really not and in from a marketing standpoint you want to kind of have that constant you know people excited about your stuff putting out new things yep. and if you just get it in chunks you kind of get peaks and valleys and you don't want peaks and valleys you want you know a constant rise so i would want them to delay it but if it's ready and it's good to go release <laughs> it but i just so you I think though, I, I guess using that. So you you think that because the dogfighting module may you know is going to be pushed back till you know March April or whatever. Do you think the whole the whole timeline has been shifted? Not necessarily the entire timeline. Um, I just I'm just thinking that it need it'll be spaced out. So okay, you know, hypothetical scenario, dogfighting module comes out in March. Let's just say three months later, planet side. Three months later you know, a next, uh, the next kind of big thing for that, which puts it, you know, in August or September. Three yeah, months I think later, after Planet Side, December. wasn't it uh, Squadron 42 Alpha? Isn't that, what the, isn't that what it was? I kind of feel like there's another module there, but we'll be corrected, I'm mm. sure. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, I, I, I'm sticking to my guns. I think it was Squadron 42 Alpha. I'm pretty sure, but I don't know. We'll see. I, I Well, I don't see that happening. I don't know. I... 
Well, there's not a whole lot of months. <laughs> I mean, if if we're <sighs> shooting for 2015, uh, and well, I mean, by 2000, the well, yeah, by the end of 2014, 2015, yeah, yeah. Huh. I don't know. I mean, I I just kind of think, wow. I know. I know. It's coming it's, up you, fast, you, isn't it? Yeah, I know. look like, at it. It's like, okay, so we're only like 12, you know, worst case, we'll say, I don't know, middle of 2015. but 18 months? Yeah. I mean, so that's, if you think about it, that's not a lot of time. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen. And I think that we're going to start seeing, I think we're going to start seeing some stuff. You're right. Probably about every three months coming out. Big, how- big thing. Yeah, I mean that's how I would do it. I would try to I would try to do kind of a three month release schedule, and the releases can be small. They don't have to necessarily be yeah. a, a, as big as a module, as big as a planet sign module. You know, we're, we've had this hangar module for for what since August, and uh, yeah. there've been there've been some there've been some small patches to it. But really, I mean, and I hate to say this, all we've really gotten since August to now are two new ships in there, yep. a fish tank you know a buggy yeah we haven't really gotten anything big i mean we got persistence and i know there's a lot of back-end stuff that's been added to make what's coming down the road better but really if you played it in august and then you played it now you really there's really not a whole lot of yeah yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't feel like oh my god i'm playing an entirely brand new amazing game right you you wouldn't feel that way but they could do you know a ship a week a ship a month just something new in that hangar module just to kind of if it were me to build that hype, to keep that hype train chugging along, even if it was ready, I'd bank him up. Yeah, you know, just like just like Chris Roberts when he was banking up the the million dollar uh, milestones for his messages. You know, the congratulations we hit. You know, seven million dollars. So he had a you know a canned speech at seven million and a canned speech at eight. And you know, right. like when we did when they did the live streams, you know, he canned some speeches. They were ready. They were ready to go, but they waited. Until they, you know, met those milestones. Well, a milestone can be a week a ship or a month a ship. And, you know, even if they're ready, just, just so we, they, the players have something that, oh, well, today's, you know, Patch Tuesday and New Ship Day. Let me log into yeah. my ship, you know, my hangar and see what's going on. Or, you know, there's, it, here's a new bar for the Planet Side module. Right. And the, and the Planet Side module, um, though, you know, you look at the hangar module and, and you look at what it is now. Every, you know, when it first came out, everybody's excited. Everybody gets into mm-hmm. it. They're all, oh, my God, this is so amazing. If you look at it now, it's it's only a very small part of the game, right? Right. And the planet side module, from what I understand, you know, in all my reading and hunting and, you know, whatever, it's just supposed to be a maybe one, maybe more planets and just, you know, like walking around in the, the bar area, the outside, the, the interface to the yeah, planet, it's, how it's, you would it's normally more navigate of the, things. It's more of their traditional MMO elements, getting right. people in the same area and talking and rudimentary trading, those type events, getting yeah. clans meeting up, it's it's or whatever, corporations, fleets. It's not Religious really... Religious organizations. Organizations. <laughs> It's it's not really designed to necessarily be. We're gonna push the envelope, and here's Terra and all of the different areas you can go on Terra, and then right. you know two months later, here's gonna be you know a planet around Vega that you can go to. It's it's more or less just stress testing the MMO mechanics yep. of you know what we're looking for. So, but then the the funny thing is is I I, th- I really do think it was the Squadron Forty Two Alpha. I mean, after the planet side, that's what what we have right. next. And if, if if you think about it, if we're thinking every three months or so, we're looking at probably, you know, June, July, August for something like that. And yeah, that that right there, if we're talking about the alpha for the campaign of the game, that's, you know, we're we're going from hangar module to planet side to you know, potentially flying missions and seeing dialogue and listening to the music and, right. you know, that sort of thing for the game. That's, that's like a huge, it's like a big jump to me. It seems kind of weird. Uh, and, and these, in the schedules that we're, that we're throwing are entirely speculation and oh, probably yeah. extremely wrong and extremely outdated. So I was going to go, well, you didn't see this post where all this was described <laughs> and it's a very basic post and you should have seen it. We're just speculating, right. you know, and, and that's all it is. But you kind of just think of the, of the progression and the path, and they almost have to start releasing if they want to make, you know, that twenty fifteen early twenty fifteen mid twenty fifteen time goal. They're going to have to start releasing some things. Yeah, every some big three, stuff. 
you know, three, four, six months, yeah. any, any more than six months in between, you know, major things, we're well past 2015. Right, because if so. you think about it, uh, beta test for the Persistent Universe, Alpha mm-hmm. and Beta for the full Persistent Universe game, that, you know, traditionally, when you think about a beta for a game, we're talking, what, three to may- maybe six at the furthest uh, months before the release of the game. Well, it depends. There are some betas that even I've been a part of, and I'm currently a part of that. Twelve months in, we're still in beta. So, yeah. um, and and the you'd almost think they would call that an alpha instead. Jeez, something like that. Or you've got you know Google to land a perpetual betas. I think Gmail's still in beta, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's true. I, I beta, don't know. beta I, is that magic word these days, right? Yeah, it's the it's the we think it's good, but if there are any problems, we'll just blame it on beta. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame it. That's what I would do. But yeah. uh, yeah, so it's it's pretty exciting though. I'm I'm really um I'm really excited. So the reason for the delay, and I, and we, I think we we mentioned it, but to kind of hit on it is they're kind of in the transition phase with the Crytek engine. Yeah. And the 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 engine that they were using for the dogfighting module was more of the kind of the fps mode of the engine right kind of the yeah. more the that type of an engine and they really it wasn't it, it wasn't be, on the mmo back end kind of right that's what and they're it, saying right so. yeah and it needs to be kind of migrated to more of the mmo version which is what new or and being specifically developed for this game and games going forward that will use the Crytek engine for kind of an MMO hybrid style yeah. game. So, <clears throat> I mean, it kind of, it, it makes sense. I mean, and if you saw the live stream and or the recording that's up on uh, on YouTube now, you can see where, you can see why it was delayed. I mean, it, it was it was just, it, it wasn't fully it baked. Cool. It looked cool, but when they're sitting there trying to get everything set up and uh, yeah. they're, they're playing and oh the server crashed, and yeah. there's a and there were only like four or five of them playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and it's to me alpha's alpha, <laughs> alpha's alpha, pre alpha's pre alpha. Yeah, right. <laughs> I have always been a fan of it's ready when it's ready. You know, yeah. kind of kind of the Blizzard model, and I'm going to say the Blizzard of maybe four years ago <laughs> model. Of, it's it's ready when it's ready not necessarily the blizzard of today it's ready when it's ready but um delay it take your time if 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 you don't release the game wanting to hit the 2015 window push it out if you need to push it out i'd rather a much better game yeah and a much better experience at the expense of it taking longer for them to make the game that's my opinion on the matter so i'm well, not too disappointed and I, and I think that's i think that's the design philosophy too i mean i, I yeah. think that is what their goal is is you know well we're going to put it out when when we think it's of sufficient quality and yep. you know if that's if that's what they if they want to, if that's what they want to do i'm all for it man yeah so uh, kind of one of the other features that are going that's that's going to be coming very soon probably before the uh, hangar module or excuse me, not the hangar module, the uh, dogfighting module, is going to be some of the um, uh, the co- the corporation, the the fleet stuff, the you know the the, the guild features, the social features, yeah, and uh, that's going to be coming more to the website pretty soon, and um, probably I can't wait for that. That's I think that, it's that, in I think it's in limited testing like now. Yeah, I think it's in limited testing now, um, but they we should start getting some feature uh, roll on that. Uh, this month, actually, we should start seeing some of that come through, and that's when I personally am going to bring the Chosens. I'm going to kind of light up the Chosens uh, division for for Star Citizen because that's what I was waiting for. You know, yeah. waiting for for them to be able to play something, which we've got. We've got the hangar module. They can't play a lot, uh, but and I've been waiting for the back end. You know, the, yeah. the being able to get people together in the game, and, and even if the game's online and it's just online even if the game's just a web page right now getting people to be able to say more than just a forum post we're yeah. a member of, of the chosen you know our our gaming community is here more than just a forum post so you know i was actually thinking soon. about this this um doing something like that putting the organizations on their site uh, isn't that what that's what swotor did right and they, swotor uh, got it so right before yeah. the game launched with their with their guild formation and then it just died when the game went live <laughs> yeah it, you're it was, right it, it completely went away right 
and it was incredible. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I was just I was just looking at the guild management features, and this was before, um, and it's gotten better. And wow, their online guild management features. But I was just, we were at the time, my group was big in into WoW, and I'm going, I would kill to have this type of guild control. Yeah. Outside of the game on a web page, and it was so perfect, and it just fizzled away. And I think I think they used it more so, and this was a great idea. Because they had, you know, instanced servers. You know, you had to be on right. the server yeah. to play with, you know, your friends. <laughs> it made sense, but they should never have gotten rid of that. It was so yeah. good. Well, I mean, it had a forum, too. Right. So you, you, you could talk to... Yeah, you could recruit. You could talk to your guild members before the game came out. You could communicate, plan, and everything. You could, and you, then... Yeah, you could say, you know, I was going to be this class, and you'd light up saying, you know, you were going to be a bounty hunter or an agent. Yep. or You know, it was it was good stuff, and... I'm, I was really, really disappointed when, and there was no reason for that to go away. It's you're right. Just, it was kind of weird. Uh, I mean, yeah. when the game came out, it was like, "Oh, you, you're on this server. Congratulations!" And then everything was disabled. Like you couldn't use yeah. it. And then, uh, what, like a week or two after the game came out, I think that whole interface just completely went away. Yeah, it disappeared. I think the only thing that ke- that kept with that was if you just said that you were going to be a bounty hunter or an agent or whatever, is you kept your little character icon. Yeah. I think it was really the only thing that survived on the website portion of it yep. was that. So to me, I love that guild management online. I love being able to, you know, quickly without having to log in the game, make those adjustments to rosters, recruitment, guild bank, all that type of stuff. So I'm, I'm hoping to see more than just structural organization and recruitment. I like being able to kind of, go in and make some changes and yeah. you know fine tune get into the nitty gritty so it's good stuff i'm excited can't wait oh, I, i'm i'm actually interested in seeing how many uh, different types of guilds there are you know i mean because you've got some yeah. of the big groups you know probably going to do corporations or fleets or whatever but there is that option there really is that option for a like a religious organization that it was there oh yeah and, and, and you know, i wonder and, how many people are going to actually role play that type of organization well, doesn't, in the game. doesn't eve have a uh, an, a religious home world origin oh, backstory man. people i don't know what they're called faction well the word. the amar they are i mean they're the more religious pro you know the you know faction but i don't know I'm just curious to see, like you are, kind of the RP elements to it. Because RP is, um, how can I phrase it? RP is, to me, is is not an essential element to the game, but it makes the community better. You know what I mean? If, if it, Does that make any sense at all? It's not needed, but if you have it, it's better. Hmm. And, oh. and it, if your community supports it. I think I think it's better if it's there. Like, uh, okay, perfect example. Swotor had a broken RP system. The RPers hated it because they couldn't, <laughs> you know, they couldn't sit, they couldn't do chat bubbles, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't really get the game to make sense. It didn't have the features that they needed to make good RP. And then you had a game like The Secret World, which had all the features that you needed for RP, and yep. neither of those communities are. Um, super awesome or you know super strong anymore but i feel like the swotor community is a lot weaker as far as you know their their dynamics of their organizations than the tsw the secret world people those people while they may be small in number they're close-knit and they're passionate about that title and they are constantly working to better um to better that that community Yeah, I mean, I I enjoyed uh, the the RP communities in you know like the Secret World and uh, I do remember the Sotor stuff, man. I I remember that firsthand because I, I like to dabble, I like to dabble. Yeah. But you know this um, actually having you know and with e, like you're saying Eve, you know they have the Amar, they they are the religious faction in the game. I don't I don't think I ever really met any you know too many people that actually did a lot of role playing in Eve. But now that we've got you know, Star Citizen and one of the four, cho- was it four choices? I think it was four choices for the organizational structure actually being a religious organization. I I think it's going to add, that's going to add a large RP element to the game that a lot of other space sims 
I think lack. Yeah. And and like I said, I don't think it's essential. I just think that you get you, you get the fanboys and, and everyone has their opinion on them, but I do think that they serve a purpose and being those cheerleaders for the game is never a bad thing. I think it's always good to have cheerleaders. Yeah. So I think I think good RP is is, is important. Um, you know, just like you know, everyone says, you know, the MMO Bible, you know, you need to have these things to have a good MMO. Yep. And while I agree and disagree with that, because it takes, if you only did that, you would never innovate. But, you know, one of the things that killed SWOTOR for a lot of people was bad rating, you know, not having good rates. It's yeah. kind of, so, you know, to have, you know, difficult, challenging PvP content, difficult, challenging PvE content, a little bit of RP, you know, good game mechanics in general, good questing, good economy, you know, just kind of mush all that together. Um, doesn't hurt to have those strong communities in those different areas. So I would love to see the religious community side of it for the RP. I just think it'd it be would fun. be cool. Just yeah. bunch of, you know, zealots running around. I mean, it might get a little annoying, but I, think it'd be fun. <laughs> the, I mean, we're already the, seeing the, 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 the RP. space quakers, you know, yeah. you know, whatever, you know, just, it's just going to be interesting to see some of the names I think too. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's, there's really not, we're kind of in that holding pattern again. Yeah. We're in that, that wait and see what's coming, what, what's next, you know, so that, so there isn't too much that we can do really other than speculate, but something we can do is start to give away some really good prizes. We do have some really good stuff. I have a, we got the uh, hookup. We, we did get the hookup and thank you very much, Sandy. You are awesome. As always. So today we have an RSI. Well, no, this is the actual um, Anvil mouse pad. Yes, the Anvil. Okay, the sold out, no longer available. Like this big. <laughs> the Goliath mouse pad. And this is the, yeah. this is the Anvil version of the Goliath mouse pad, which is no longer available. It is sold out. The only yeah. way to get them is through secret black market drug deals and murders yeah. or and I through think our, I think we have like two or three of them. <laughs> or you can do some simple things and we can give you one potentially for frizzle. Absolutely. So, and I think what are we uh, what are we talking about here, Thomas? I think we're talking about uh, watching our our YouTube video and commenting on the video and offering some insightful comments, right? Right, and they don't always have to be good. We want good ones. Yeah. They don't have to be good. They could be you are you guys are dumbasses, and here's why. And if they're good <laughs> reasons, hey, you got it. You know, it could be yours. Yeah. But all we're looking for is is a like, a comment, and a subscribe. Or, or it, and that's all we need. So, a good comment, a like on our video, and a subscription, and the best comment, good, bad, or in between, for this episode, we'll get it. So, if you're one of those people yep. who subscribe to us on the RSS feeds, I'm going to open it up to you if you put an iTunes review out there. Yep. So, we'll, we'll put it there. We're not just gonna we're not gonna just keep it solely locked in on the uh, on the YouTube. So if you, if you have a good comment out there for us, and you're already obviously subscribed to us if you're you know commenting to us on on the uh, on the iTunes, so but a good YouTube comment about anything. So, yep. You know, and I will uh, you know I, I have I have a you know quite a few of these things in my possession, and a lot of times um, you know there's a lot of crazy rules and stuff that go along with this, but I will mail this to you no matter where you live on this planet no so necessary yes so Some if you live on earth for details and yes. that's the restriction if you live on you earth you will get this. on earth like commented and subscribe to us on the youtube or commenting us on itunes <laughs> so speaking of our comments uh, our last episode that's no moon it's an uninsured space station had quite a few comments and we had some really some really good ones. I think, you know, some people were kind of talking about, um, about, uh, you know, we mentioned the, 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 my, you know, fear of not being able to buy expensive ships with insurance and, you know, with that built in lifetime insurance and people are going, well, you know, gosh, well, now you're saying that, you know, you won't buy a ship, but here you'll buy a space station that, you know, for a, temp a temporary period of time. 
um kind of in the spirit of that it was more of a kind of a cooperative thing for the uh you know your community would purchase that um but we had some really really good comments one in particular that uh that we both wanted to mention was caden three's comment and he pretty much just just laid it out there that he thinks that dlc and things like that have kind of ruined um the industry in, in some regard um you know, the yeah. example, you know, he mentioned specifically DLC, uh, specifically, you know, kind of Battlefield 4. You know, you get unfinished games um, or games like, you know, and I hate to say it because it's my favorite franchise, but Mass Effect 3 with day one DLC. There's no reason that it shouldn't come with it. And uh, kind of limiting the li- you're getting a crippled, a crippled game that you have to add on to to get the finished product. And what are your thoughts on that? Because I think it's I think it's worth mentioning and worth discussing because um, it was a really good conversation. I personally, I don't understand why there would ever be any sort of day one DLC with a game, or you know, anything kind of like that. I mean, uh, if, well, if some... I, I not to not to be an apologetic, I'll I'll immediately say why there's day one DLC. Discs are printed, and you send you send discs to a manufacturer several months before the game is released to be printed, and if you re- are releasing content, if you've finished a piece of content after the disc is printed, you can't go back and reprint the disc. So it's so it's DLC. But that's it's but shitty. that's what patchers are for. When yeah. even even day one, you get that disc, you put it in, you still got to download two or three gigabytes worth of patches just to play yeah. the game. It's 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 I, I guess I guess just it for me. I don't have a problem with DLC. I I do ha- I do have an issue with day one DLC. I, you know, it is kind of mm, it's it's just not necessarily the the best thing in the world. But to me, I see day one DLC no different than pre order bonuses or collector's edition bonuses because you know you can get a game for forty nine ninety nine or fifty nine ninety nine, and you can pre order it and get you know your Nuke Town DLC pre order bonus or your bigger GameStop exclusive shotgun. Or you could buy your collector's edition and get a few extra maps. So to me, it doesn't feel any different a day one DLC than maybe like a collector's edition because you're getting something that was already completed anyway, but you have to pay a little bit extra to get that. So I don't I don't see it as any more sinful than collector's edition perks where you pay a little bit more and get a little extra out of it. I mean, okay. I mean it's still kind of crummy. But I don't see it as any worse than that. But yeah, I think you know if you look at a game like uh, I don't know what's what's a recent one that's come out that's got well I, I guess like Battlefield Four, right? You know the whole Civilization uh, Five. Yeah, Civilization Five. Well, did Civ Five have Day One DLC? I don't think so. I don't think they had Day One, but they did have DLC. Uh, and I think Battlefield Four didn't. They don't have. They didn't have Day One, but they've got no. the whole season the worst, pass thing, right? The that's worst... what a lot of people are doing. Yeah, I mean the worst. I think the worst one in recent memories is Mass Effect Three's um, collector um, day one DLC. Um, but I know we're having some some Skype issues, so I'm going to kind of ramble for a few seconds while kind of everything percolates. But uh, to me, DLC is really good at <clears throat> if DLC is done right, it can be really good. I mean, there's is is to me. If you get the full and complete campaign, if it's a single player game, that's that's what you should get on the disc. If you want to add a few extra maps, if you want to add a little bit of, you know, three months later to keep the game fresh, here's, you know, a new single player experience or a new multiplayer map, I have no problem with DLC. Um, his fear in, in Caden's comment, you know, is that DLC's destroyed games, where, you know, with, you know, in, with that ultimate sin of day one DLC. Um, and also unfinished games being released. He's afraid that if, if, if we if we start to have things that you can rent in game, that other people are going to do it, and he doesn't want he doesn't want to see where the game industry will be after that because it's a symptom of a bigger problem, a bigger disease. Are you is is did Skype clear up for you? Are you getting a little uh, better? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, um, it's just periodically going in and out for some reason. Um, yeah, for the. For DLC, man, I I'm not a big fan of it, to tell you the truth. I'm not a big fan of DLC at all. I'm I'd rather have large expansion packs instead of small little things. I'd rather get a lot for twenty, thirty bucks 
than spend 10 to 15 often. So yeah. especially especially if the game has a sub and Ooh, to me if it has a sub that's almost it's almost wrong. Mhm. The, the, the tr- that's the triple dip, right? You know, mm-hmm. you sell content, you pay a sub, and you have an item store. That's the triple dip, and a lot of games are doing that now. And it's, you know, it, it could at least it's not a game like, uh, you know, the Facebook games or the uh, iOS Android games like the Candy Crush Sagas, or th- you know, the Farmvilles. Oh, that, you ran out of is... lives. Yeah, you pay five dollars for more lives. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let we'll let your crops grow a little bit faster with this magic sauce that you can get from our store, or you can that's wait twelve hours to harvest. To me, that is more than day one DLC. That is like the disgustingness of in-game micro purchases and transactions and DLC thingies, if you will. To me, that's the worst, more so than than day one DLC. But um, you know, he kind of you know he kind of went on to say, you know, it's it's th- this whole concept of of buying things and. Um, you know, having it affect your in-game performance is something that, you know, has been plaguing EVE players. Um, and he mentioned something that we mentioned early on, which he does agree that there are some things that can be charged for. And one of the things that we mentioned early in Season 1 was um, using microtransactions to support things that might need to be reviewed. Um, and one of the things being player art for ships or for, um, you know, uh, your organizations, if you want to have logos um, you know, charging for that, and I think that both of us think that that's an awesome thing to do to get some earth, continuing revenue and something that needs to be, you know, vetted so we don't have a bunch of penises on ships flying around. Yeah, <laughs> you, know you know what's gonna, what it's gonna be? It's gonna be it's gonna be boobs or it's gonna be penises flying. You know, yeah. if, if 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 they don't get involved and, and approve them, it's gonna be boobs or penises on ships. So or or racial slurs. It's the internet. So it is the internet, but um, uh, I mean, it, it, these are the type of comments that we're looking for those, those in depth, challenging. You know, this wasn't all, you know, oh, you guys are so wonderful. <laughs> so right, we enjoy it. And I'll keep those comments coming in on, on YouTube or on our email, which is uh, what is it, show at beacon147.net. That is uh, it. You can get us on the Twitter at Beacon147 or, you know, on our iTunes comments or on our YouTube comments. Keep them coming in. We're reading them. We're engaging with you guys. Uh, we definitely want some ideas. Um, we've got that contest going on for that sold out. Can't get it anymore. You have to, you know, murder a hobo and, <laughs> and steal it from Fort Knox. I mean, it's the only way to get it now. Or you can do this and get that mouse pad. So. And we do have some other stuff for, for later. We, um, stuff. we got, do coffee mugs we've got golden coins that gradius is providing maybe yeah (laughs) we've got uh we've got some polos yeah of very varying sizes um we've got a single squadron 42 t-shirt and um lots of uh united earth empire you know stickers for you know whatever you want to stick them on so we'll Every, probably everyone throw... who wins something, I think we'll we'll get some stickers. Yeah, that's right. We, oh yeah, got... you're definitely gonna get some stickers. <laughs> we, we've got so many stickers, we don't know what to do with them. Yep. I mean, I, we've got wallpapers. You could you could wallpaper your room with the amount of stickers we got. So yeah, absolutely. We got a bunch. Speaking of rooms, the office is now complete, so no more red walls, no more blue walls. So if you're, you know, where's the yoga viewing, ball, man? The yoga ball, the yoga ball is 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 here. He's just uh, under the desk. So oh, there you go. Yeah. So, but we're, we're, we're in, or I'm in, you know, the new office. So, uh, but other than that, man, we need some good, we need some, we need some good, uh, some good star citizen news. We haven't, we've, we're in this drought. We're in this. Yeah. So, it'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. It'll be something good. And I can't wait. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention, um, we are looking to occasionally, if you guys, if you know, if, if you've got some good equipment, you know, bringing it, bringing a rotating third chair every now and again. So if you've got some really good ideas and you're not afraid to have your mug posted on the internet, um, you know, send us, send us an email and, you know, we'll kind of talk and see, we're not going to guarantee it for everybody. And we're working on some things, some more interviews with the CIG team and, uh, some more people within our own community. But, um, 
we like the idea of having you know at, from time to time more than just the two of us talking more more people is more ideas and more discussion and it would be perfect for uh shows like this when there's just not really a super amount of information out there and available so yep uh, anyway that's more all pieces. i have yeah that's it all right guys well this is thomas signing out this evening yep and this is bobby and uh, i guess we'll see you next time see you next time